the beach class. There's Mitchell here. I'm going to be your new teacher next year when you'll be in Ash class. So that will be different, won't it? I'm really sorry we're not going to be able to see you coming up to my lovely purple classroom and having a nice morning together like we usually would. But at least that you can see the video and I can have a little chat with you. I know quite a few of you. I know some of your brothers and sisters, so uh, one or two of you might already know me. I might even know your mum, one or two of you, you never know. So it would be lovely to see you all in September in our purple classroom. It's the one with the purple carpet all the way down the end of the Key Stage 2 corridor just before you get to the Rainbow Room. That's going to be where we'll be in September. We've got lots of new projects and topics coming up for when you're year four, which will be fun and exciting. Our first topic will be called Habitats. So that will be lots of outdoor work, lots of stuff about animals, lots of finding out about nature. So I'm really looking forward to that. Fingers crossed, we might be able to go on our trip to Sherwood Forest where we stop the night. So we'll wait to see about that because things have been a bit tricky, haven't they, recently. Uh, and the, all the usual things will be going on as well, our English, our maths, our French, our PE, our singing, all of those things will be happening when we come back in September in my class. It will be great fun. Just going to finish this video starting to read you a little story that we're going to carry on with when you come into my class. It looks like this, probably backwards for you guys, isn't it? just going to give you a taster just the first chapter starts like this sophie couldn't sleep a brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains it was shining right onto her pillow the other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still she tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open. But nobody was walking on the pavement outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. Perhaps, she told herself, this is what they call the witching hour. The witching hour, somebody had once whispered to her, was a special moment in the middle of the night when every child and every grown-up was in a deep, deep sleep and all the dark things came out from hiding and had the world to themselves. The moonbeam was brighter than ever on Sophie's pillow. She decided to get out of bed and close the gap in the curtains. She reached out for her glasses that lay on the chair beside her bed. They had steel rims and very thick lenses and she could hardly see a thing without them. She put them on, just like mine look, and then she slipped out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. When she reached the curtain, Sophie hesitated. She longed to duck underneath and lean out the window and see what the world looked like. Now the witching hour was at hand. She listened again. Everything was deathly still. The longing to look out became so strong, she couldn't resist it. Quickly, she ducked under the curtains and leaned out of the window. In the silvery moonlight, the village street she knew so well seemed completely different. The houses looked bent and crooked, like houses in a fairy tale. Everything was pale and ghostly and milky white. Sophie allowed her eye to travel further and further down the street. Suddenly, she froze. There was something coming up the street on the opposite side. It was black. Something tall and black. Something very tall and very black and very thin. We're going
going to have to leave it there until I see you in September. And then we will be able to carry on with this very exciting story, which you might or might not know. I'm going to say goodbye for now. Ash class to be in September, beach class for now. So looking forward to seeing you in September when we'll be all together in school again. And it will be really lovely. Bye for now.